Remember the glory days when the movies treated wrestling like it was a joke? Like no holds barred. What's that smell? <laughs> Nacho Libre. <laughs> or my personal favorite, Ready to Rumble. Mike, what is this? <laughs> Hollywood has always looked down on wrestling. They call it fake. Unlike all that documentary footage Hollywood makes, like this real footage of humanoid cats that did so well for them. Even when one of cinema's most celebrated auteurs, Darren Aronofsky, released The Wrestler in 2008, some believe its lead, Mickey Rourke, lost out on the Best Actor Oscar because he appeared on a segment with Chris Jericho on Monday Night Raw. But as great work from Vice's Dark Side of the Ring and the wrestling films and TV shows from Rock that Dwayne Johnson has shown, professional wrestling is as real as it gets. And there are far more tragically true stories in its history than the Von Erichs. A24's Iron Claw movie tells the tale of the Von Erich family, who for a brief period in the early 80s were wrestling megastars in their home state of Texas, but whose dynasty ended in an almost unbelievable series of tragedies. The film also centers on world-class championship wrestling, the Dallas-based promotion where they made their name, which was also home to some of the craziest characters in 80s wrestling, many of whom show up in the movie. Some had their lives cut short like most of the Von Erichs. Others are still with us, and a few are amongst the biggest and most impactful names in wrestling history. Here is what happened to all the Iron Claw wrestlers in real life. Jack Jr. Von Erich. Let's start with the main characters in the film, the Von Erichs themselves. Or are they? Because the Von Erichs aren't actually the Von Eriks. Their real last name is Adkisson. But the family father in the movie Jack changed his name to Fritz Von Erich when he was an active wrestler in the 1950s, which was designed as a post-World War II evil foreigner gimmick, which means a group that would go on to be the ultimate all-American family had kayfabe roots of their public name in Nazism. Guess it's kind of like Hydra in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Von Erich. Anyway, Fritz was a big-time heel in 50s North America, which was when the first family tragedy struck. While staying at a trailer park in Niagara Falls in 1959, Fritz and his wife Doris's oldest son, Jack Jr., died after touching the metal part of a caravan that had somehow been electrified, and then falling face down in a puddle where he drowned. He was only six years old, and some say Fritz never truly got over the loss. David Von Erich by 1984, Fritz was running the NWA territory in their home state of Texas, where his three oldest surviving sons, Kevin, David, and Kerry, had become huge stars. But another tragedy was about to strike. David, who was viewed by many as a future NWA world champion, was found dead in his hotel room during a tour of Japan at the age of 25. Some have speculated his death was caused by a drug overdose, but the Von Erich family have always insisted it was a case of acute enteritis, which is inflammation of the small intestine. The official cause of death registered by the authorities backs up their version of events. Mike Von Erich. With David dead, his 19-year-old little brother Mike Von Erich was fast-tracked into a prominent spot at World Class to take his place alongside Kevin and Kerry. But the following year, on a tour of Israel, Mike suffered a separated shoulder during a match. That's a normal injury for wrestlers to suffer, and he underwent successful surgery after returning to Texas for it. But soon afterwards, he developed a rare post-surgery infection called Toxic Shock Syndrome causing him to develop a fever of 107 degrees and taking him to the brink of death. He survived, but suffered some brain damage and was never the same afterwards. In April 1987, not long after his 23rd birthday, Mike tragically took his own life. Chris Von Erich. This is one Von Erich brother who isn't featured in the Iron Claw movie. Chris was just 17 when Mike died and was desperate to become a pro wrestler like his older brothers. The problem was, he was only 5'5", five five, weighing 175 pounds at a time when body image was far more important, and he suffered from asthma and brittle bones that would sometimes break when he performed even simple moves in the ring. Spiraling into depression and drug use after Mike's death, Chris also took his own life just over four years later at the age of 
21, Kerry Von Erich. Meanwhile, middle child Kerry had become a global star, signed by the World Wrestling Federation and competing as the Texas Tornado. But he too had addiction problems, not helped by the fact his right foot had been secretly amputated after a motorcycle accident in 1986. For years, he wrestled while wearing a prosthetic and managed the pain with drugs. He was eventually released by the WWF in the summer of 1992 and six months later found himself facing potential jail time for violating probation on drug-related charges. At that point, he also took his own life, dying in February 1993 at the age of 33, leaving Kevin as the only surviving brother. Meanwhile, Fritz died of cancer in 1997, age 68. Wanting to get away from where all the tragedy took place, Kevin moved with his wife and four children to Hawaii in 2006. On behalf of his father and brothers, he accepted a WWE Hall of Fame induction in 2009. Now 66 years old, Kevin makes occasional appearances for WWE and other promotions, and has been supporting his sons Ross and Marshall, who have kept the dynasty alive by becoming wrestlers themselves. Kevin and his wife moved back to Texas within the past year, and they now have 11 grandchildren. And that's what happened to all the Von Erich family members. You know, it's a tragic tale, but at least Kevin's doing well there. Oh, just one more thing. Lance Von Erich. There's one more Von Erich that we haven't mentioned yet because he wasn't a Von Erich. When Mike Von Erich was recovering from his toxic shock syndrome in 1985, Chris was still far too young to take his place. So Fritz decided to pretend the boys had a cousin called Lance handsome young bodybuilder who had a vague resemblance to the family. The problem was the kid chosen for the role was from Dallas. So loads of people who would go to the shows already knew him and how he wasn't a member of the Von Erich family. Surprise, surprise, it didn't work. Lance, whose real name is William Vaughan, was out of world class within little more than a year and went on to own a chain of health clubs in South Africa, which he sold in the mid 90s for a multi-million dollar sum. Vaughan now lives in South Texas and released his brilliantly titled autobiography, Lance by Chance in 2020. He was played by MJF in the Iron Claw movie. The Fabulous Freebirds! Moving on from the Von Eriks, or people who claim to be the Von Eriks, the Fabulous Freebirds were the Von Eriks' biggest wrestling foes. A group of brash Georgia boys with questionable morals who were the total opposite of the good Christian values that the Von Eriks were presented as standing for. The Freebirds themselves are considered to be amongst the greatest teams of all time. Their leader was Michael Hayes, who kept wrestling until the mid-90s before becoming a manager and agent in WWE, where he still works today as a senior producer, being entrusted with the company's biggest storylines, like the bloodline. The Freebirds enforcer was Terry Bam Bam Gordy, a bruising 300-pounder who was considered to be among the best big men in the business. He was still wrestling around the time of his 40th birthday in 2001, but later that year, he died of a heart attack caused by a blood clot. Buddy Roberts, the third member of the group, died of pneumonia in 2012. The Freebirds were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2016. Gino Hernandez Played by Ryan Nemeth in The Iron Claw, Gino Hernandez was one of the biggest stars in world class outside of the Von Erichs and the Freebirds. Only in his early and mid-twenties for most of his run, Hernandez was considered one of the best heels of his generation, portraying a fast-living, arrogant playboy with expensive tastes. Much like Ric Flair. He was being tipped as a big future star, but he didn't live long enough to realize that potential. Hernandez somewhat lived the gimmick and was known to socialize with some shady figures involved in organized crime. By early 1986, he had become paranoid that powerful people were out to get him. After no showing a couple of world-class events, company officials went to check on him at his condo in Dallas and found his body. He was only 28. For years, there has been speculation as to whether his death was caused by a cocaine overdose, as it appeared at first glance, or whether there was foul play involved. A 2019 episode of Dark Side of the Ring may have answered that question, as one of Hernandez's associates contacted them to claim that he had not been murdered, and the death was a legitimate overdose. But some people still have their doubts. Bruiser Brody. 
Bruiser Brody was another staple of world class in its heyday, but the real life Frank Goodish had a reputation for being a Frank Badish, difficult to work with and making enemies backstage. One of those enemies would be the end of him during a trip to Puerto Rico in 1988. Brody was set for a match at a big stadium show organized by regional promoter Carlos Colon, but ended up having an argument in the locker room prior to the show with a man called Jose Gonzalez, who wrestled under the name Invader One. Brody was stabbed in the altercation and later died of his wounds in hospital. Gonzalez claimed self-defense and was acquitted of murder in a trial in 1989, but some of those with first-hand knowledge of the incident have claimed that Gonzalez killed Brody in cold blood and that the trial was a sham. Brody was 42 years old at the time of his death and left behind a seven-year-old son, The Sheik. Another wrestler depicted in The Iron Claw is The Sheik, who's not the same person as The Iron Sheik. They're different people. In fact, he's referred to as original Sheik to help separate them, like he's a flavor of Coca-Cola. He was a pioneering hardcore wrestler who competed in world class for years, but was in his late 50s by the time the Von Erich boys became main eventers. He was a successful promoter for many years in his native Detroit, and is also the real life uncle of ECW legend Sabu. His real name was Ed Fahat, and he lived until 2003 where he died of heart failure at the age of 76. He was posthumously inducted by Sabu and Rob Van Dam into the WWE Hall of Fame, in 2007. And the rest! Legendary wrestler Ric Flair is also in the Iron Claw, portrayed by Aaron Dean Eisenberg. He ended up a 16-time world champion, not too shabby, and has probably had a similar amount of retirement matches. Harley Race, one of the most iconic world champions of all time, was played by Kevin Anton in the movie. Race died of lung cancer in 2019 at the age of 76. And finally, two non-wrestler characters were Gary Hart, the dastardly heel manager who also booked some of world class's finest moments, he died of a heart attack in 2008, and the fascinating sports commentator and news journalist Bill Mercer, who provided play-by-play -play announcing for World Class Championship Wrestling. Fascinatingly, he covered JFK's assassination in Dallas in 1963, and is believed to be the reporter who told Lee Harvey Oswald that he had been charged with the president's murder. Mercer is still alive, living in a retirement home at the age of 96. After all that tragedy, cheer yourself up. Watch us try to name every WWE Tag Team Champion in Survival Series. Click in the video on the left.